let's analyze a few examples of objects that are undergoing uniform circular motion. Before we launch in, let's remember that forces pointing into the circle toward the center, they're made positive, and forces pointing out away from the center are negative. Every new scenario we see comes back to this equation. It seems like a simple equation, but there's a lot of concept packed in. This equation says that in order to turn at constant speed, you need to feel a net force pushing toward the center of the circle. So every time you see a new force diagram or a new object, we are going to ask the question, what gives rise to that net force? What pushes it toward the center? Here is the first scenario. It's a bit odd. You've got this frictionless table, and then you have a little puck connected by a string. The string passes through a hole in the middle of the table, and the string continues downward where it connects to a hanging block. This block is not touching the ground. It's just hanging at rest. And already, that's a hint, because if the object's at rest, what's true of the forces? Okay, the puck is moving around in a circle, and so this equation applies to the puck. But here's my question. What force is pushing it toward the middle of the circle? What force causes the puck to turn? To answer that question, let's remember that gravity always acts. And of course, the puck is touching the table, so it also feels a normal force pushing upwards. Now, is there anything else touching the puck? Yes, the string, of course. And the string normally is a little shorter, but the ends are stretched, and thus, those ends feel a tension force. They want to be back at their normal, relaxed length. And so this tension force pulls the puck toward the middle of the circle. That's going to be our net force. But every time you have a tension force, it acts not just at one end of the string, it also acts at the other end. So this hanging block feels an equal tension force pointing up. These arrows should be equal in length. What else acts on this hanging block? Gravity, of course. The block doesn't have a normal force because it's not touching the ground. Now, we know that normal force and gravity force will cancel each other out for the puck. They have to because the puck's not accelerating up into the air or down into the table. It's only accelerating toward the center while it turns. And thus, the net force is tension. But the tension force is also equal to big M times G. How do we know? Because if we look back down here again, we remember that this puck is in equilibrium. It's not moving at all. And so the forces must balance. Here's our next scenario. You are holding a ball connected to a string and you're whirling it around in a vertical circle. You know, maybe it goes over your head and then down by your feet and then over your head, but it's moving vertically. What force turns this ball toward the center of the circle? What force points in? You can probably already figure it out, but let's analyze the forces. Gravity points down. The tension force points up toward the middle of the circle. And so we say, all right, add up the forces to get F net. And this one is pointing in, so it's positive. Mg is pointing out from the circle, so it's negative. This is what we get for the net force on the ball. What about when the ball reaches the top of its path? What turns, what forces turn the ball toward the center of the circle? Well, you still have gravity pulling down. Gravity always pulls down. But now, when it's at the top, think about the string. Look at the two ends. Where does tension pull? It pulls down, believe it or not. And these two forces now work together. Instead of over here, they worked against each other. So here, tension had to be really big to overcome gravity and thus turn the object. Now, tension doesn't have to be so big. The two together have to add to give the same net force. So here, 
both forces are positive because they both point toward the center of the circle. Here's the next scenario. A car is moving around a circular track going this way, counterclockwise, and we know something must be pulling it toward the center of the circle. Where does this force come from? This one's a little trickier. Let's uh, look at the car. Let's imagine we're standing right here, looking at the car head on as it makes the turn. There's the car. Here's like the license plate. You know, here's the front windshield and the car is kind of coming at us. What force turns the car? Well, we know the car feels a gravity force and we know it feels a normal force because it's touching the ground. But what force is pointing toward the center of the circle? It turns out that the center pointing force is caused from traction with the tires. In other words, this car kind of wants to swing out away from the circle, but the grip, the traction keeps it from doing so. The grip, the traction, the static friction point back toward the center. And that is the force that turns the car. Fn and mg cancel out and the net is just static friction. But we have an equation for static friction. When static friction reaches its maximum, it's equal to mu, the coefficient, times the normal force. But what does the normal force equal in this scenario? mg. Okay, next scenario. We have a ball connected to a string and we're whirling this thing around in a horizontal circle. This is the ground, the ball is not touching the ground. It's just whirling around uh, in a horizontal circle kind of parallel to the ground. The angle theta is between the vertical and the string. So something is pointing, some force is pointing toward the center of the circle. Some force is pointing to the right. What force? turns this object, what force points toward the center? Well, there's always gravity. And what else do you see touching the ball? The, the tension force because of the string. Now I'm gonna take these two forces and redraw them over here and there's theta. We, whenever we have forces at angles, what do we do? We draw components. We've got the X component of tension and the Y component of tension. And because we drew the components, we can kind of squiggle out of the hypotenuse. We are showing that force now through the X axis and Y axis components. These forces have to cancel out because the ball is not accelerating upwards or downwards. It's only accelerating toward the center as it turns. Okay, so the net force then is Tx, and Ty balances Mg. Look at the triangle. How could we relate Tx and Ty? Using tan theta. Here's theta, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so opposite is Tx, adjacent is Ty, or Mg, because they're equal. If you isolate Tx, so cross multiply, what do you get? mg tan theta is equal to tx, but tx is the net force, we said, because tx points toward the center of the circle. Our final scenario is a roller coaster. Here's the cart at the top. It goes down the hill and reaches the bottom. Now, the cart is turning, but is it moving around a circle? Well, yes, momentarily, it's moving at the top around this circular path. It doesn't make the full circle. It kind of deviates and goes straight for a while. But then at the bottom, again, it is moving around a circular path as it turns. Any turn, in fact, has some radius to the curvature. What forces at the top, what forces are responsible for turning the cart? Well, we know there's a gravity force, but is there any other force? Notice the wheels, they're touching the track. So yes, there's a normal force pointing up, 
pause the video and try to answer this question. Would the normal force be shorter than mg, equal to mg in size and magnitude, or longer than mg, like, like my arrow shows here, my, my uh, pointer? What do you think? Should fn be drawn shorter, equal, or longer? The answer is shorter. And the reason is because when you cancel fn with mg, there must be a little bit left over pointing downwards, turning this thing, and the net force has to point toward the center of the circle. So you need more force downwards than upwards. When we add the forces together to find f net, which ones are positive and which are negative? Don't be fooled, mg is positive because it points toward the center of the circle. Fn is negative because it points out from the circle, away from the center. At the bottom, what are the forces that we have? Well, we have the exact same gravity force. If it's 100 newtons of weight here, you have 100 newtons of weight at the end. The difference, though, is Fn. Again, try pausing the video. Should normal force be shorter than gravity? equal to gravity or longer than gravity? At the bottom, how big is Fn going to be drawn? Pause the video and try to figure it out. The answer is that Fn now is bigger than gravity because you need a net force pointing toward the center and the center is up from the bottom. So Mg will cancel out some of Fn but there will be a bit left over that doesn't cancel and still points up. That bit left over, the unbalanced or the net force, is what turns this thing upward toward the center. When you add these forces to find the net force, which is positive, which is negative, now Fn is positive because it points toward the center, Mg is negative because it points out from the center. Now, before we finish this video, I just want to point out one small thing. You have felt exactly this when you ride a roller coaster. At the top, you feel almost weightless, small fn. At the bottom, you feel quite heavy, large fn. Gravity, we know, is your actual weight, but the normal force is your apparent weight. The normal force is how heavy you feel. So when you step on a scale, yeah, it's supposed to tell us our gravity force, but you can trick a scale easily by pushing harder onto the surface or lifting yourself up off the surface. The normal force is what a scale actually tells us, and if you lessen that normal force, then you feel lighter, and that's what you feel when you're at the top of a roller coaster ride. But if we increase the normal force, if we press harder against the surface, we feel heavier, and that's why we feel so heavy at the bottom of the ride. You know, if you ever tried to like sit up or lift yourself off the seat at the bottom of the ride, you wouldn't be able to. It feels like you're just too heavy, and that's because of the large normal force. Thanks for watching this video.